Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. Say so today's going to be a little different video here. I've got this backup camera that's designed for tractors, and I plan on putting it in my Bobcat 763, which is right over there. And uh, yeah, I've got the garage cleaned out here. It's a sunny day. I'm probably going to just be out on the driveway with the sun and not much wind. It should be okay to work on it out there. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty warm out today and the sun's shining. I just hosed everything down, so... I don't have a fancy GoPro. All I've got is a... Uh, my phone. So, we'll see if we can make this happen with the telephone. Telephone camera. Come on, baby. Been sitting for a while. All right, let's get this thing shut off. I did have a, a mirror mounted here, which lasted about a day when I threw the, the safety bar up, I smashed it, so. I know I'm not going to be putting the camera right there. Let me get a little wider here. There. I know the camera won't go there. But I think I'm going to put it on top of the roll cage here. And because uh, I could run the wire right in the back. And uh, I've got power coming here to the switch for my flashing light on top of the cage. So uh, let's see what happens here. I've got the camera hooked up to a 12 volt battery here just to kind of demonstrate the way I'm going to put it in. I'm just going to hook it up to uh, ground and positive and I'm going to put the positive, tie that in with my flashing light that I have on the roll cage. I'm not going to bother with hooking up to reverse. Um, I'd rather just have it this way, that way. When I turn on my flashing light, this will power up. I can just hit the power button. And I've got a camera view of the back. And then I can also go into the different modes here. I messed around with this in the basement a little bit to change the lighting if I'm in dark conditions. So I am going to take all this down to the Bobcat over here and uh, see if I can figure out where I want to put things. All right, I'm in the Bobcat cab. Anybody that's ever operated Bobcat realizes that there's not a lot of room in here. Uh, you have this bar that swings up and down. That it swings by the whole side of the machine all the way up to the top. But And then I've got my information here with this little sunscreen. I don't want to block that. There's really no room here. I had the mirror here before. I smashed that within, I think, a day, throwing the bar up and jumping in and out. This door's not going to be on, so by the time you take that out of the equation, you've got that much room across the front. Okay, and there's no way this is going to work. You have to be able to get in and out of here. So I think what I'm going to do is, this is the bracket I put in for the mirror. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and that'll give me enough room. I should be able to get the monitor right back in this corner. Yeah, the bar, keep it out of the way of the bar. When I swing it up, you can see the indent on the the headliner there where the bar stops. And I'll still have enough room to get the key in and sneak my hand behind there to turn on the light switch. This bracket goes back way too far, so I'm going to have to take a grinder. I'm going to cut this off, but fortunately... This is wide enough that I can get in from the outside of the cab to screw this to the back of the plastic uh, shroud in there. And this side I'll be able to just do from the other side of the cab. Cut the back of the bracket off. And just by dumb luck here, this fits on, just happens to fit on both sides of this piece of plastic. This plastic shroud over the, that the light switch is in and the key start is in. So I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes in here and I can get this pushed back far enough. I'm going to drill some holes in the sides here. So I can just either pop, rivet, or screw into this plastic shroud. And uh, we'll make sure it's pushed up high enough 
that the safety bar isn't smacking it every time and I'll have to keep this over far enough so my window I can open and close my window here it looks like there'll, there'll be enough room yep there'll be enough room and then I can get at it through this hole in the cage to get some screws into the other side here and that's where the monitor is gonna be it's far enough it sits out far enough I can still reach a light switch Holes drilled in my bracket here and I deburred both sides of it. Uh, the plan is, I don't know what's behind that plastic. Uh, I'm going to kind of poke around there a little bit, try to make sure there's no wires in the way. Uh, and I d I'm not sure how thick it is either, so what I'm going to do is drill a hole and I'd like to just pop rivet it on rather than screw it on. But once I drill the holes, I'll see if that's going to work or not. When you push this back, this is a 763, but you can see there's a cable there, and then there's a little bit of plastic going back. That just goes back to the other side of the cage here, and there's a screw that's holding this on. So this is only about an eighth of an inch thick, so I just very slowly drilled through, and then just kind of pushed back to make sure nothing was there. Same thing up here. I just barely caught the bottom edge of this plastic here, but I'm still way away from the cable there. And I'm only going in a little bit because I'm not going to be putting a screw in there. I'm going to rivet that. Oops, I'm only going in a little bit here. As you can see, it's about an eighth inch thick. I'm not hitting anything in either hole. And I'm just going to pop rivet that. I don't want to put a screw in. Okay, now I'm just hoping this other side goes as smooth and there's nothing behind there. Safety bar up just to make sure I've got this out of the way. And I'm just going to push this back a little bit further and up a little bit and I can tell that if I drill real slowly those wires are back far enough. So I started out with these shorter rivets. I don't think I was getting a very big ball of aluminum behind the plastic so I switched over to these longer ones and it ended up being so much tighter. What a difference. I should have done all of them with this longer rivet here. All right let's continue. Well, so far so good. I've got both the tightening nuts and the bracket here. Uh, you can see my popper if it's going into the plastic. Uh, got them both in on both sides. And even though I should have used those bigger rivets from the start, it's it's plenty tight. This thing weighs nothing. The biggest thing is going to be it's going to be, you know, it's going to bounce around just like I am, but it's in there tight. So, and I can still operate my window. It just sneaks by the the bracket here to open and close that I can get at my key no problem it's up high enough I've got enough room I can pitch this up a little bit more the only thing will be eh, it'll be a little bit of a chore to reach in there and turn on the lights but uh, don't use the lights that much anyway so that's not a big deal so now I got to figure out and oh, another thing is here I can Hang on. The other thing is I can put the safety bar up and it's stopping right in front of the monitor. It's just stopping short of hitting the monitor. I won't be able to put that little sunshade on, but with it being tucked up there along the headliner, that's not going to be necessary anyway. I've got the camera mount on top of the cab. I'm just using a magnet to hold it there until I decide. But this is the view that I have right now. And this is with it hooked up just to the, the power so that I can toggle this on and off rather than don't really have to wait for a reverse. And then it's got the different standard lighting, soft, vivid, light. And I'm pretty impressed. The sun's actually, I'm facing north now. The sun's shining right on the cam camera and I'm still getting a pretty good picture here. I can imagine it'd be better if the sun was in the other direction so the next step i gotta want to do here is uh i'm gonna pull back the headliner the side of it here i'm just gonna there's a spot behind here i can't hold the camera and show you at the same time i'm just gonna follow this line scribe line on the outside and get back far enough so i don't hit the glass and then I'll, I'll drill the hole to run the wires from the camera into the cab this is where i've got the camera on top of the cab with a magnet and i don't want to drill a hole in top just for rain and whatnot so I'm going to come in and follow this back and just come in back here with the hole. Now what I'm probably going to do is just grind down to bare metal here and weld on an angle iron bracket that I can put the camera so I can keep it below the 
the top of the roof because sometimes I go in garages to demo the floor and I don't want to hit this going in and out of the garage so I'll get it down here. They do provide a rubber grommet so I'm going to see if I can get that wiggled in there and then I'll, I'm will i going to pull in the garage. The sun's gone away, the wind's picking up and wrap up the wiring inside. Well the plan was to work on this outside with the sun shining. thought it'd be nice to get a little fresh air but Sun went away, the wind picked up, and uh, the air got a little too fresh. So I'm gonna work on it in here now. So I've got the switch I installed. Uh, it's hot all the time on this side, and I'm just gonna go to this side. So when it's turned on, that's for my flashing light on top. Because uh, when this is turned on, this little blue light indicator light's gonna come on, because it's got power. So that'll kind of doubly remind me that uh, even though this says on and off, that I've left the flashing light on if this blue light is lit up. So sometimes in the summer when it's bright out, you might not realize you have that turned on. Okay, I've just run the wire. There's, a, there's I don't know what they're thinking. They just put a short wire on the monitor that goes to this connector and be really careful when you hopefully I'm not blocking the light there's a couple of arrows on that and the pins in there are really thin so make sure to line up the arrows before you screw these together I can see things going wrong in a big hurry you bend those pins over so what I'm going to do with mine is okay I'm just gonna run that over there and run this cable all the way to the back into this back corner between the side window and the back window and deal with it back there and then all I have to do is I'll find a ground point back there and I'll just run my power wire. I can get a ground right here so I'm gonna put my ground here I'm gonna tape off the wire for this extra video camera just so it's not touching anything if it's shorting something out. I'm gonna tape, tape off the reverse power wire and then I'll have to add on to this red power wire, run that back over the, around the headliner, back to my switch for my warning light on top, and then I should be good to go. The picture on the camera turns to black and white, but there's I've got the lights turned off in the garage. There's a little bit of light coming in that side window there, but those infrared lights on the camera came on automatically. So that's kind of cool. It's going to be interesting to see how it works at night. Well, for right now, I'm just going to leave the camera on top of the, the roll cage here on the Bobcat. I did get that, had to trim a little inside of that rubber grommet off to get it to fit in my hole. I used the biggest bit I had. It maybe could have, it was big enough that the cable went through, so I don't want to make a bigger hole, but uh, everybody's going to, I don't know what people will be putting this on. Everybody's going to have a different idea where they want that camera. So I think what I'm going to do is, I don't have any angle iron right now, but I'll just grind this to get a good weld here, put a piece of angle on here, sticking out like inch and a half or so, and then move this camera down just so the top of the camera is below the uh, top of the cage here because I do have my, I can unhook my, my flashing light up there and take it off and then it gives me a little more clearance coming in out of a garage, especially if I'm digging or using a hydro hammer and pushing the pushing the front of the cat up a little bit when I come out so uh, yeah there it is hope this helps everybody thanks for watching I'm gonna jump in the cab and just run through the menu quick if people want to keep watching and watch that all right I'll go ahead and switch on my light on top and that gives me that turns on this blue light if I turn it that'll be kind of handy then too because if I turn off my I have It'll let me know I've got my if I got my light on or off. Sure, I can see it in the garage, but outside it can be a little different. So let's just turn on the backup camera. You can see my garage door. Well, you can't see any of the switches here, but you got these buttons down here, or you can go into the menu. That's kind of neat. You can make it brighter or darker depending if you're in a pole shed or something grading. And then uh, that's for your other camera. I only have one. And then it says volume and stuff like that on it. But uh, I, when I put this in, I looked in the back. There's like holes for a little speaker. But there, there's, not a, there's not a speaker in there. So I don't know what that's all about. But 
this is all I really care about is the fact that I'll be able to see behind me and uh, yeah I always do a walk around before I run the cat anyway but you can see if a car pulls up behind you or if a car is coming down the street or whatnot so all right thanks for watching if you like the video hit the like button subscribe I know I don't do that many equipment videos but I if this one gets a lot of views then I'm gonna start doing it and I'm gonna get a better camera all right let's back this thing out of here Thank <laughs> you.